गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स तो आई बी टॉकिंग ऑन दिस टॉपिक बीटा ब्लॉकर्स इन आईसीयू तो आई बी गिविंग ए ब्रीफ ओवरव्यू दिस इज इन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ द जर्नल रिव्यू द जर्नल दैट इज गोइंग टू बी प्रेजेंटेड व्हिच इज लैंडलॉल इन इंटेंसिव केयर तो तो दिस इज अ स्ट्रक्चरल स्टडी व्हिच केम इन जामा so to just to create a context for that it is imperative that we understand what are all the previous studies that have happened in this dimension about the role of beta blockers in icu so most listeners you would know beta blockers are favorable in acutely ill patients and beta blockers in icu is a very big topic so there are multiple conditions where beta blockers have found to be beneficial so like uh, beta blockers in traumatic brain injury there is a distinctive role so which i'll be doing a separate video so uh, today i'll be more focusing on beta blockers in sepsis and the number of studies that have happened and there is a role of beta blockers in um, burns patient also so on and so forth so which i'll talk later so why beta blockers in icu so when we have these patients with sepsis and uh, so there are three sort of a receptors that can get activated and that is where the whole role of beta blockers come in play so so in sepsis we all understand there is a catecholamine surge and there is a cytokine storm that happens and there is release of lot of pro inflammatory cytokines and beta blockers has a role in mitigating this storm and this effect of these uh, pro inflammatory cytokines so there is increase in the tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin 1 beta interleukin 6 so we know this that there's a whole lot of inflammatory mediators that get released in cytokine storm and these levels tend to increase and there is activation of both alpha and beta receptor following this storm that happens and this activation of both these receptors alpha and beta leads to platelet aggregation and so there can be platelet aggregation and there's lot of endothelium injury that happens and they become very leaky which we know that happens and this gets perpetuated by activation of these receptors and because of these platelet clumps that forms and the leaky endothelium or injured endothelium there is microthrombi formation also that happens so obviously uh, it is purported or hypothesized that the role of beta blockers in having effect on these receptors may have a favorable outcome then the activation of alpha receptors that happen in sepsis causes vasoconstriction and because there is a vasoconstriction there can be pulmonary venous constriction and pulmonary capillary pressure tends to go up the hydrostatic pressure goes up and there is perpetuation of edema formation within the lungs so they can have ards ali pulmonary edema so on and so forth so this happens with the activation of alpha receptor then now we are more interested in beta so the activation of beta receptors leads to myocardial injury myocardial dysfunction can happen because of the storm that happens there can be myocardial necrosis and we know there is a distinct entity called septic cardiomyopathy where myocardial dysfunction happens and this happens due to over activation of the beta receptor so there is myocardial necrosis and there can be left ventricular failure or cardiorespiratory dysfunction that sets in so this is the sort of conundrum that can happen with activation of various receptors in sepsis and the hypothesis is that beta blockers may have favorable effect by mitigating the effect of these activation of these receptors so what really happens in sepsis so in sepsis we know that there is tachycardia so why tachycardia it is a natural sort of a adaptability by the body to improve the cardiac output in sepsis so increase heart rate there is increase cardiac output and why cardiac output increases it's a it's an intent to increase the oxygen delivery so there is increase in the oxygen delivery and uh, so this whole process because there is over tachycardia there is some sort of a coronary hypoperfusion also that sets in so all this is a protective natural mechanism that tends to happen so then why beta blocker so with the use of beta blocker so our effort is to minimize the heart rate so our intent would be to reduce the heart rate and reduce the myocardial oxygen consumption so i'm sure most listeners would appreciate this that by in heart failure or in cardiac condition our intent is to reduce the heart rate so that the myocardial oxygen demand comes down and oxygen consumption is reduced and there is more time for diastolic filling uh, so there is reduction in the diastolic filling time so they we give more time for the diastolic filling and improve the coronary perfusion so this is our 
a sort of conceptual understanding as to why we would want to slower the heart rate in uh, sepsis. So this is our understanding and this is where the science of whether there is any role in the use of beta blocker in sepsis comes. And our whole intent is by reducing the heart rate, reducing the myocardial oxygen consumption and reducing the diastolic uh, filling time. So, and improving the coronary perfusion, our intent is to reduce the risk of myocardial ischemia and optimize the favorable outcome. So, this is our conceptual understanding. So, the now we look into the evidence. When you look into the evidence, so it all started in 1972 with a case series uh, where they used beta blockers in refractory septic shock. Uh, where they found some hemodynamic favorable effect of propranolol. After that, there were multiple studies. So if you look into this, dig into this literature, there are truckloads of studies with regards to role of beta blockers in critical care. Today, I'll focus more on sepsis and maybe in the subsequent video, I will do on role of beta blockers in traumatic brain injury. So when you look at evidence, the evidence is limited to case series. Then there are a lot of retrospective and prospective observational studies. So I'll just you give an overview of, of five retrospective and prospective observational studies. Then there are about at least eight randomized controlled trials of the role of beta blockers in sepsis. And once you have randomized, then you'll have meta-analysis. There are around four meta-analysis which have been published looking at the role of beta blockers in sepsis. So this was the study that came early on in 2008. This was a observational study by the Austrian group, uh, Schmittinger et al., where they looked at 40 patients and uh, they looked at whether beta blockers was effective in controlling the heart rate, maintaining at 65 to 95 beats per minute. And out of 40, in 39 patients with the use of beta blocker, they could, control, they could have a very good control on heart rate. And what they also found with the use of beta blockers, they found the stroke volume index also was significantly increased. So, which means they had a favorable effect on improving the cardiac output. And what they surprisingly saw in this study was the need for norepinephrine, vasopressin, and mildrenone requirement significantly reduced when beta blockers was used in sepsis patients. So, this was an observational study. So, after that, there were a lot of prospective observational studies that happened that looked into cardiac output, whether beta blocker had a favorable effect on cardiac output. So, Gore and Wolf et al., U.S. group, they saw that with use of beta blocker, the cardiac output reduced proportionately in relation to the heart rate. So, Morelli et al. was the Italian group where they said the use of beta blockers really did not change the cardiac output. Then there was a paradigm shift. So, Balik et al., uh, he, this is from the Jacobson group, Zek group, where they showed cardiac output did come down, but it did not have a, any significant impact. But then this particular study, observational study from Chinese, Du et al., they showed that in, on the contrary, use of beta blockers increased the stroke volume, like Schmittinger who showed increase. So there was increase in the stroke volume. And this happened more so with ultra short acting beta blockers like Esmolol. So that's when the whole shift happened with the use of ultra short acting beta blockers like Esmolol, where they said the Esmolol really did not have an impact on reducing the cardiac output. And after this, there was another study by Shang et al. in 2016, where they showed that use of esmolol, which is an ultra-short-acting beta blockers in sepsis, reduced the duration of mechanical ventilation also. So they started seeing favorable effects with the use of ultra-short-acting beta blockers in sepsis. So, but these studies, as I said, are retrospective and observational studies. They were small sample size, and uh, the outcomes, the clinical outcomes that were looked at were a little uncertain then they had to resort to doing randomized control trials. Although observational studies showed signals toward favorable effect, they had to do randomized control trials. So this was the first randomized trial that came, Esmolol in septic shock, Morelli et al. again by the Italian group, published in JAMA in 2013, where they looked at 154 patients randomized between standard group and Esmolol group, and they found that heart rate control with the use of Esmolol happened very well and they could maintain good heart rate at 80 to 94 beats per minute. Median reduction of the heart rate was 18 beats per minute with the use of Esmolol. And that was statistically significant. And even in this study, right, which is a randomized control trial, they showed that stroke volume and left ventricular stroke work index significantly increased in the Esmolol group when compared to stroke, uh, standard group. And uh, again, like, the Schmidt, which showed the observational study by Austin group, Schmittinger, norepinephrine need and the fluid resuscitation, the fluid requirement 
also significantly decreased with the ethmolol group. So, which showed use of ethmolol had a favorable effect in this randomized control trial. And they also showed that pH, lactate, and base excess improved with the use of ethmolol as compared. So, so this was a randomized control trial published in 2013 JAMA. We showed favorable effects with the usage of uh, ultra short acting beta blockers ethmolol on the outcomes. After this, there were about seven randomized controlled trials, and surprisingly, a significant proportion of them came from China. So these are all the studies. So I won't go into the details because these are all small randomized. The first one was from Belgium. And if you see all the subsequent ones, uh, five of randomized controlled trials came from China in a very non-specific or uh, not a high-impact journal. And then there was one randomized control trial that came from Japan, published in 2020 in Lancet Respiratory, which was the first sort of a pilot study with the use of Landolol. Landolol is like Esmolol, which is an ultra-short-acting beta blocker, on which subsequently you will hear about the journal presentation on that which was published in JAMA. So, Kakihana, so, so these were the randomized. So, now you had eight randomized control trials, following which then the meta-analysis came. So, the first meta-analysis was from Chaco et al., published in 2015 by the UK group. They took all the nine studies, and they showed when they put all the studies together, the use of beta blockers showed benefit with reducing the heart rate and reducing the mortality and improving the acid base. So, we showed they showed all favorable effect with the use of... Um, beta blockers. After this, then the San Filippo et al. was another meta-analysis that came in 2015. Again, showed similar signals. Use of beta blockers showed benefit with reducing the heart rate and there was no serious adverse event. So, then there was this another random uh, meta-analysis which came Liu et al. where they took five randomized control trials where only ethmolol was used because these two randomized control trials used all the beta blockers. So, Liu et al did a meta-analysis with only studies which used ethmolol, five randomized controlled trials. And if you see the survival rate in sepsis when ethmolol was used, the relative risk was 2.06 and it was statistically significant, which means it had a very favorable effect on the survival. The use of ethmolol in sepsis, septic shock, had a favorable effect on survival. But when they looked at the hemodynamic parameters like CVP, mean arterial pressure, mixed venous oxygen, there was no difference. Then after that, there was another meta-analysis by Lee et al., again with Esmolol, uh, from US group, by randomized control trial with uh, 14 studies. So Esmolol showed favorable outcomes with odds ratio of 0 0.407, and which was statistically significant. So these meta-analysis, all the five meta-analysis which I've showed, showed strong signals towards favorable outcome with the use of beta blockers, more so the effect was profound with the use of ultra short acting esmolol. The Lee et al. and Liu et al. both showed favorable effect with the survival with the use of esmolol. So, this is about the current evidence with regards to beta blockers. So, now the question is in ICU, in sepsis, many patients do develop atrial fibrillation. So, these were two good studies. So, as you see, this was published in Chess in 2016. In atrial fibrillation, they did a propensity match cohort study. Uh, which was published in 2016 on the role of beta blockers. Here they compared whether beta blockers were superior to digoxin, calcium channel blocker, or amiodarone. So they looked at whether beta blocker versus CCB digoxin, and they found that the beta blocker had better effect in reducing the hospital mortality, especially when the heart rate was maintained less than 110 beats per minute. So this was also very provocative to say that beta blockers had much more profound effect when compared to calcium channel blocker, digoxin, and amiodarone with regards to reducing the heart rate and improving the clinical outcomes. And uh, this particular study, which I said, uh, which was the first pilot study where they used Landolol. This is a Japanese randomized control trial. They did in uh, with use of Land Landiolol, and uh, the subsequent talk will be on that where they showed there was a significant reduction in the heart rate and reduction in the new onset arrhythmias with the use of this landiolol. So that is about in atrial fibrillation. So going forward, so Jose Gawa et al., who is again a Japanese, did a meta-analysis with a usage of ultra-short-acting beta blockers, which is esmolol or landiolol. So they took seven randomized controlled trials and... Uh, to maintain heart rate less than 95 beats per minute. And this was a study using only ultra-short-acting beta blockers. 
572 patients and they found that 28 day mortality was significantly less when ultra short acting beta blocker again re emphasizing what liu and lee showed that with the use of esmolol there was a profound effect in improving favorable outcome this was re emphasized with this meta analysis by hosegawa et al where 28 day mortality was significantly less when ultra short acting beta blockers were used and this was statistically significant and here they went on to show the absolute risk reduction was 18.2% number needed to treat was 6 means they had to treat 6 patients to save one life so that was the meaning of that so which was also very profound and provocative sort of a finding they found so all in all if you see it all started with a case series in 1972 then went on to show the prospective observational studies which again showed signals towards favorable benefit then came the randomized control trials um, so that one randomized control trials is 150 patients showed a strong signal again towards favorable outcomes with use of beta blockers and then there was series of uh, randomized control trials by the chinese groups followed by meta analysis which again point out that the effect was more profound with the usage of ultra short acting like esmolol and then subsequently japanese did a trial with landiolol where again they showed favorable effect and the meta analysis by the japanese group also showed favorable so all in all you see a robust sort of an evidence building with the use of beta blockers uh, then moving on to more of ultra short acting having better impact so this is the sort of evidence we had then the question remains how about patients who are already on beta blockers so we, this is no brainer i'm sure every listener would know someone who is on previously beta blocker have a favorable effect with regards to outcome when they get admitted to icu we know that but just to recap our evidence so this was a study matche at all this is the largest sort of a study where they looked at 9465 patients who were on previously beta blockers for various reasons and they found that in these patients when they get admitted to icu sepsis their mortality was significantly less and singer at all again showed in 2017 if someone is on beta blockers already and they get admitted to icu their hospital mortality is less and 30 day mortality also is less tan at all again showed the same thing someone who is on pre morbid beta blockers their mortality is lesser compared to the patients who would not have been on beta blockers in icu setting and goods at all this is from israeli group so there they pointed out that cardio selective beta blocker for more protective like metoprolol or esmolol so on and so forth which are more cardio selective or more protective than uh, beta blockers which have effect on uh, alpha also so that is the sort of a message that came out from this particular study so now the question is how about if someone is on beta blockers before would then one continue on beta blockers if they come to icu so that came from this trial by fuck that all this was a prospective observational study from germany which again says if someone was already in beta blocker generally out the tendency is when they come to icu we stop the beta blocker so the question is whether should we continue so that came from this study they looked at 296 patients where they continue using uh, beta blockers when they get admitted to icu in 167 patients they continued usage of beta blocker so the 28 day and 90 day mortality was significantly less in the group where they continued beta blocker as opposed to stopping them as compared to where the group where they had stopped and that was statistically significant and even they found in this study the fluid requirement also was significantly less as you see the p was uh, uh, significant so this goes on to show so until now whatever i spoken there is a compelling background body of evidence which point towards favorable outcome with the use of beta blockers continuing it in icu and the and the uh, ultra short acting beta blocker seems to have more profound effect in at least the meta analysis and by this japanese group which again did the meta analysis and landolol pilot study but the current study which will be discussed obviously it was a negative trial but we have to keep in the background all the studies that have evolved over many years which shows very provocative message or a signal towards favorable effect of beta blockers and esmolol is the most studied drug for all the trainees the dosage that is being used is 0.05 mg per kg per minute so if you are dealing with a 60 kg it is 3 mg per minute and uh, over hour it is around 16 mg to 25 mg per hour that is the sort of infusion that one could consider using esmolol in icu and the uh, and the targets when you use esmolol is to reduce the heart rate by 20% or keep heart rate between 70 to 95 or 100 because as, as you see in the study 
most studies try to maintain at around 95 or less than 95. So this is the sort of uh, evidence uh, on the background that we have. And this is a context setting for this uh, new study that is come, special study, which was published in JAMA. Uh, so, so that's about the evidence. So maybe in the next video, I will talk about uh, uh, the role of beta blockers in traumatic brain injury, because that is also a, a big sort of a body of evidence uh, that is evolved. So I'll talk on that. So thank you one and all. So I request all the listeners to present your valuable work or journal of acute care. And you can visit my website, www.pradeepangapad.com to rehab to this lecture. So thank you one and all.